It's 11 in the morning. You're on your lunch break at work, seated on the outdoor patio, eating a sandwich, enjoying the trees and the birds, when suddenly it gets dark. Very dark. The sun seems to be disappearing before your eyes. Imagine at this point that you didn't know anything about science and that you had no idea what was going on. What would go through your mind? Could this be the end of the world, an act of God? Was the sun, the source of all life and warmth on Earth, about to fade out entirely? We are very fortunate that we don't have to ask ourselves these questions anymore. But for early humans, this was their reality. Although, I don't think they had sandwiches back then. So maybe it would happen while they were eating a piece of meat or some fruit or... I don't know. You get the idea. I bring up this example of early humans being baffled by a solar eclipse because I want to stress just how incredible of an event this is. These early people undoubtedly felt absolute awe, wonder, and albeit fear when seeing an eclipse happen. Some people say that explaining the technique behind a magic trick ruins the feeling of wonder. And today, we modern humans certainly know how to explain what's going on during an eclipse. But I personally don't think knowing this ruins the magic at all. Instead, I think it adds to it. Because what's going on here is pretty incredible. An unbelievable act of nature that we get to watch happen. And when you watch it, these things that you see might be a once-in-a-lifetime experience. So what is a solar eclipse anyway? Well, let's talk about it. A total solar eclipse is actually a pretty rare thing if you don't travel much. And by rare, I mean you'd be lucky to have one during your lifetime, or children's, or your grandkids' lifetime, all combined. On average, a total solar eclipse occurs in one particular place just once every 400 years. Okay, so let's zoom out a bit then to the entire lower 48 United States. It can't be that long before the next total solar eclipse in this huge area, can it? Actually, it's still quite a while. We won't have another total solar eclipse in the lower 48 states until 2044, which admittedly is much less time than waiting 400 years, but like, come on, I still don't want to wait 20 years to see something cool. Okay, so what about the entire world then? How often do total solar eclipses happen on Earth? The answer is about every year and a half, or long enough for you to have renewed your Netflix subscription 18 times. And I don't even want to think about how many shows you've binge-watched in that time. The reason for this infrequency is because we need things to line up perfectly for a total eclipse to happen. And this perfect alignment has to come at the right time. In other words, you need to be in the right place at the right time. If that sounds tricky, let me explain. Let's start with talking about the right time. So you know how everything is orbiting around in space, right? Well, a solar eclipse happens when the moon passes between the sun and the earth, casting a shadow on the earth that either fully or partially blocks the sun's light. But wait a minute, isn't the sun like huge? As in you can fit a literal million earths inside of it and still have space left? And isn't the moon like not huge at all, as in it's smaller than the Earth? So how does the moon cover up the entire sun? A solar eclipse is a bit of an optical illusion and a perspective trick. We know that things further away from us appear smaller, and things closer to us appear larger. Think of the classic pinching the Eiffel Tower photo that people make. No, Karen, your hand isn't really that big, and the Eiffel Tower really isn't that small, but it appears that way in the photo because you're manipulating the perspective of it. So, even though the sun is about 400 times larger than the moon, it is also about 400 times further away from Earth than the moon is. And this means that when the moon slides between the Earth and the sun, we are at the perfect perspective for it to cover up the sun entirely. Except, here's a plot twist. The moon's orbit isn't a perfect circle, it's an elliptical. So the moon isn't always exactly the same distance from Earth. Sometimes the moon is further away, which means it'll appear smaller in the sky. But then what happens if the moon tries to eclipse the sun? Well, if the moon is further away, it will appear smaller to us, meaning it's no longer able to cover up the entire sun from our point of view. These are a different type of eclipses though, called annular eclipses. These are where the moon slides in front of the sun, but it only partially blocks the sun because it's further away in space, therefore appearing smaller. 
So you could be lucky enough to have everything line up perfectly for you to watch an eclipse and then you only get to see an annular eclipse because the moon is too far away. So bummer, right? But what makes the upcoming April eclipse so cool is that it is going to be a total eclipse. So the moon is the optimal distance to us to perfectly cover up the sun and create total darkness, which is going to be pretty darn cool. Okay, but what if the moon still passes between the sun and the earth, but things aren't quite perfectly lined up? Maybe the moon is off to the side a little bit. Then you get something called a partial eclipse. And remember this term because we're going to come back to it later. If you factor in every type of solar eclipse, total, annular, and partial, you get a solar eclipse happening about two to five times a year. But most of these are going to be partial eclipses. So still cool, but slightly less exciting. At this point, we've explained how we need to be at the right time to see a total solar eclipse. But now let's explain how we need to be in the right place. Solar eclipses can only be seen from very specific places depending on the eclipse. This is because the entire eclipse is a perspective trick, so you have to be standing in the correct place to see it. Think of those 3D sidewalk illustrations that look so lifelike. If you view it from the right position, the entire scene comes alive. But if you look at the scene from a slightly different angle, it just looks, well, a little strange. It loses the magic completely. I mean, why is this lady's leg so long? I don't, yeah, that's, no. A solar eclipse follows the same concept here. We have to be viewing it from the right position to see its magic. All the places that are in the right position are known as the path of totality, or the path on Earth where we can see the full eclipse. This path is about 115 miles wide, and if you're located anywhere along here on the day of the eclipse, you're sure to see it. Now, what about everyone who isn't in the path of totality? What about people who are a little off to the side, or anywhere else in the United States even? Well, remember I told you to remember the term partial eclipse? Right here is where it comes into play. In addition to some eclipses only being partial eclipses, never getting to totality anywhere, partial eclipses are also part of every single eclipse, including total ones. This is because in order for the moon to move in front of the sun and totally eclipse it, it has to gradually slide in there. I mean, it doesn't just pop in front of the sun and then move out. So while the moon is moving in front of the sun, you get a partial eclipse. Pretty much everywhere in the lower 48 states will see a partial eclipse on April 8th, as well as people in parts of Canada and Mexico. It's sort of like these people are standing just to the side of one of those 3D chalk illustrations so they can still see the illusion, but it doesn't look quite right. Still, during a partial eclipse, the world around you does appear to get darker, and there are still tons of awesome things that you can see, do, and look for during only a partial eclipse. Which, spoiler, I'll be coming out with a video on that soon. All right, so now we're in the right place at the right time. But how long does this eclipse last anyway? I mean, some people are traveling hundreds of miles to see it. The answer? Not very long. Total coverage is actually a really short window, only about four minutes. But I mean, when you consider the fact that the moon is moving at a speed of over 2000 miles an hour, four minutes actually seems like a pretty long time. That said, the entire, entire eclipse lasts a little bit longer. Like I said before, the moon doesn't just pop in front of the sun. It has to move there and then move away. So before and after the total eclipse happens, we also get to watch the partial eclipse happen while the moon slowly moves in front of the sun and then slowly moves away from the sun. In total, all these phases together last about two and a half hours. So there's lots of time to see the eclipse itself, but the real magic is during total coverage. That's where the really, really rare phenomena comes into play. There is still so much left to cover about eclipses, and in fact, I am doing a countdown on this channel to the April 8th eclipse. On that day, I will be taking a trip all the way over to the Path of Totality and making a video on what it is like to witness a total eclipse. In that time before, though, I will be posting a video right here on this channel once a week to get you prepared for the upcoming eclipse. We'll be talking about cool tricks you can do during an eclipse, as well as rare and fascinating phenomena that you can see, but you have to know what to look for. In total, we'll basically be covering everything that you might need to know to experience the eclipse fully. <laughs> get it? Experience it fully? Total eclipse. <laughs> OK. 
Okay, sorry. Anyway, uh, even if you are not in the path of totality, a lot of these videos still apply, and we'll still be talking about cool things that you can do in even a partial eclipse. So be sure to hit that subscribe button down below so that I can see you in the next one.